I'm uh, standing here at City Forward with Sean O'Connor, the candidate uh, for the federal seat of Sydney, uh, Brent Pilates, who's the dealer principal here at uh, City Forward, and Ian McLean, who's the uh, head of the uh, automotive group uh, that owns City Forward. Let me just start by talking about the uh, in CPI data today. Uh, whilst the headline numbers are good, uh, the fact is Australians are still struggling with some of the challenges of cost of living. And the fact is that you're never going to have cost of living properly addressed uh, whilst you continue to have the upward pressure of, uh, of the carbon tax on electricity prices more generally during the course of the year uh, and on gas prices and everyday prices about the things that people can't avoid buying. Uh, but people can avoid going ahead with the purchase of motor vehicles, and Kevin Rudd has made it much harder uh, with the changes to fringe benefits tax. Uh, Mr Rudd is in denial about the impact of his on-the-run decision-making. Uh, the FBT changes are having a very real effect on the motor industry, and they're having an effect now, and it is costing jobs. Uh, the fact that Mr Rudd thinks uh, that because he is relying on Treasury figures they must be right, uh, just underscores the fact that he doesn't understand the impact of his own decision making. Uh, the dealers, uh, the industry more generally, is very blunt. 75 uh, per cent of the people who are going to be affected earn less than $100,000 a year, and most of them are driving around in Toyotas, Fords, Holdens, Mitsubishis and the like. Uh, the fact is most of them are earning $65,000 a year. And according to the government's own data, uh, more than 300,000 people are going to pay uh, $1,400 a year extra in tax. Now, the government hasn't got its narrative right on this. On the one hand, Mr Bowen says this is about a budget integrity measure, and then he says it's about fairness. On the other hand, Bill Shorten says there are no rorts. This is about the sustainability of the tax system. And today, Kevin Rudd said there's a loophole. They're all over the joint. They're simply after the money, uh, but they don't understand the full impact of their decisions. And that's why everything this government does and says, you cannot believe because they don't understand their own decisions. Now, I'd just say something more about the inflation figures today. Uh, clearly, the Reserve Bank now has room to move for an interest rate cut next month. If the Reserve Bank cuts interest rates, it's not because the economy is doing well. It's because the economy is being challenged. Challenged by significant headwinds, not only uh, by the transfer and the transition in the economy, but headwinds coming out of Canberra. The fact is, Kevin Rudd is now causing further instability and uncertainty in the Australian economy and an interest rate cut next month will confirm that. Uh, and what we want is to see stability and policy making out of Canberra, and that's why the coalition is strongly opposed to these changes on the run and policy on the run in relation to FBT. Uh, finally, I'd say this instability is getting worse because the government is leaking on a daily basis the further problems they have with their budget. You do not create business and consumer confidence by leaking bad news about the budget every day. I call on the Treasurer and the Prime Minister to immediately release the full accounts of the federal budget. Stop playing these games. Stop blaming everyone else for the failure to deliver a surplus. Show the Australian people the real numbers now. Stop selectively leaking information about the budget because all that is doing is further undermining business and consumer confidence. Now, I'm going to ask uh, the dealer principal here to talk a little bit about the uh, impact of Mr Rudd's decision in relation to FBT on this business here at City Forward. Brett. Sorry. Well, good morning. This uh, is a very difficult time in the industry. July is never a good month, and there's plenty of uncertainty as we lead into the election. This decision has had a really in a dramatic impact on our business. It's slowed down far more than we would have liked. And one of our better clients is a, an organisation that looks after the car buying needs of the teachers of New South Wales, the Teachers Car Buying Service. They've had, it up until now, an immediate freeze on uh, any deliveries. 
And uh, as of now, they, they really believe that this will cripple their, their business. They won't be able to look after the needs of the teachers going forward with if, if this legislation is to pass. OK. And Ian, would you like to say something about the impact uh, on your business, which has 10,000 cars here? Yes, the point I'd like to make is that uh, ours is a business. Our group sells about 10,000 new cars a year. And any uncertainty causes uh, a slowdown. And right now, the buying public are uncertain. And when they're uncertain, they defer their purchase. We ordered our cars five months ago. The cars keep coming. They're piling up in the backyards and the customers are deferring. It becomes an immediate problem. We have to fund that floor plan inventory. Uh, we need consistency and for the customers to keep buying. So it's a big problem for us. And Sean, do you want to say something about the charitable sector as well, which you're familiar with? I think the, the, point, that I, the, the, the point that I'd like to make is that in this, the electorate of Sydney, we have many charitable organisations and not-for-profits that are based here. With the changes that are happening to the, the FBT, that means that these organisations will not be buying cars. It means that the, the workers in these charitable organisations will not be taking cars as part of their salary package due to the extra red tape that's involved in them doing so if they were to proceed. So in, in electorates like mine of Sydney, it's having a, impacts right now as we speak. And as Brent's already said, the changes mean that those cars will keep on piling up in their car, in, in their car yard until we get a change to this horrible government. Thank you. OK, are there any questions? Mr Hockey, you're saying that Labor's contradicting itself on this. What about the Coalition, though? We know that you're proposing to reverse it, but is there rorting or scamming of this, and will you do something about it? Well, there, there is no evidence of rorting or scamming, and the government has not delivered any evidence of rorting or scamming, because the government uh, had changes proposed in the Henry Tax Review. They then implemented those changes in 2011 in a budget where they were scraping the bottom of the barrel for savings. Just a few weeks ago, uh, the government said there was nowhere else to go and they were rolling out uh, this program of the 20 per cent uh, uh, cap, uh, statutory cap uh, in relation to FBT. Now, now they're saying it's been widely rorted. They are entirely inconsistent. It smacks of policy on the run. And it just goes to show everything Kevin Rudd touches turns into a disaster for others. He keeps moving on to the next item, hoping people will forget yesterday. But the problem is everyone is hurt by his decisions yesterday and everyone is going to be hurt by his decisions tomorrow. So as Treasurer, would you assume there isn't rorting or would you actually... Well, I want to see the evidence. I want to see the evidence. But there has been no evidence put on the table of widespread rorting. And as Bill Shorten said, Bill Shorten is the Financial Services Minister, as Bill Shorten said, there is no rorting. He said that. So one minister says there is no rorting, another minister says there is rorting. They haven't got a consistent story. But it is people who are paying the price with their jobs. Anyway? And how many yeah. uh, job losses have there been since changes to the MBT? Well, so far there has been literally hundreds of reported job losses. Uh, in one business alone, in Melbourne, there was uh, uh, 75 people uh, were sacked last Friday. Uh, that's been the starting point. Uh, I think you're going to see this deteriorate. And again, it comes back to the fact uh, Kevin Rudd thinks there's uh, the taking $1.8 billion out of uh, middle-income workers is painless. Well, it isn't. It isn't. And you're starting to see the job losses now, and Mr Rudd can't keep denying the impact of his on-the-run policy making. I can ask you about uh, Gonski very quickly. Victoria contemplating signing up. Uh, given that the Catholic schools have come on board now, is it still feasible for the government to be offering what they have been? Is it still well, This is another case of policy on the run. Magically, the government finds an extra $600 million yesterday. Uh, where's all this money coming from? On the one hand, they're complaining about revenue falling in the budget, and they've obviously got multi-billion dollar cost blowout associated with their PNG deal. Uh, on the other hand, they're throwing more money, more money without any accountability uh, to try and get their Gonski plan up. Sooner or later, uh, the rubber's going to hit the road. There has to be proper accountability for all this money Kevin Rudd is spending. He does it all the time. He does it all the time. Uh, policy on the run 
expenditure on the run, someone else has to pick up the pieces after Kevin Rudd has destroyed the job. Uh, speaking of Kevin Rudd, I understand that later today he's announcing a competitiveness agenda for the Australian economy. Is yeah. that a good idea? Do we need something like that to make Australia... Work? Well, you know, I thought he was meant to be consulting at length with people, uh, but he's announcing an agenda, is he? Well, that doesn't surprise me. I mean, Kevin Rudd's full of, you know, water and wind. We all know that. The problem is that everyone has to mop up the tears... Uh, when it all ends in tears. In your list, though, of problems faced by Australia, where does its competitiveness sit? Well, competitiveness is part of productivity agenda. If you're going to improve productivity, you've got to have a competitiveness agenda. And the Coalition has already announced a number of new initiatives in that area, including we said we're going to have a root and branch review of the Competition Act to ensure that there is a fairer balance between the interests of small and large businesses. Now. Uh, Kevin Rudd is a latecomer to all this. He's always got an agenda, he's always got a statement, uh, but he's rarely got action, and when he does have action, he ends up hurting people. And some of the people look around here, they're being hurt by Kevin Rudd's actions. Okay? Thanks Thank very you. much. Thank you. Challenges, innovations, solutions. This is APAC, Australia's public affairs channel.